Hello you fantastic people and welcome back to Cyberpunk 2077. In this video I have a complete guide on how to get all of Johnny Silverhand's stuff in this game. Starting with that beautiful Porsche you can see on screen, you can also get that beautiful jacket, the gun which has the coolest reload animation in the entire game, and it shoots fire as a quick melee attack which is just awesome. You can also get his legendary glasses, shirt, pants, shoes, and you can also get his metal arm in the game as well. I'm going to show you guys how to do all of it for you guys in this video. Also, there's no spoilers in this video whatsoever. There's a few gameplay clips in the missions, but it's just the key information to make sure you don't miss anything because you can miss this beautiful Porsche and you can miss the pants as well if you don't know where to look. But it doesn't spoil any story stuff whatsoever. And with that, let's jump straight into it for you guys, starting off with Johnny's iconic samurai tank top, which looks really cool in game. That one you can acquire just by playing a main mission called Tapeworm. That one you find a good chunk of the way through Act 2's mission. So just play through the game, play through that mission, and once you've completed it, you'll be given Johnny's tank top, which you can uh, equip in your inventory. Then once you've completed that, that's when it all really kicks off. You get given a side mission, which honestly, I'm shook it's not a main mission because it's a very big storyline and mission. Play through this one, and that's where you acquire the really cool looking glasses, that awesome looking jacket, the gun, which is so, so cool, as well as the beautiful Porsche, which you guys could see at the start. Now, those first three items, no stress whatsoever. You cannot miss those. The glasses just get put on by your character in a cutscene. Those will immediately be put into your backpack, so you can put them on later on if you would like, whenever you get control of your character, essentially. The jacket you pick up from the back of Rogue's car. The mission directs you there. You can't really miss it. You can't actually progress through the mission without picking it up. And the gun is at the very end of the mission where you'll find an enemy that has the gun and you essentially just take it off them. Now that same enemy, you get given the choice to either kill them or spare them. The dialogue really pushes you to make you think that you actually have to spare the enemy to actually get the reward, which turns out to be the Porsche, but it's actually not the case. It doesn't matter which dialogue option you, can cho you choose, you can either kill them like I did or you can just spare them up to you guys if you spare them the mission will direct you to find the porsche otherwise just follow the game plan i'm going to show you guys on screen it's extremely close to that enemy if you decide to kill them just loot the keys off their body anyway and then just to the left hand side jump up that ladder there'll be uh, controls to drop a shipping container to the ground go open that shipping container and you will find johnny's beautiful 911 portion there and it looks so so cool and is a really cool car to drive as well uh, in the mission johnny will let you drive it and it'll sit in the passenger seat with you for the rest of the mission we'll drive around in it the car itself not the fastest car in the game it does max out at 160 which is still really really quick i think the fastest car is 199 so a bit of a comparison there for you the handling pretty damn good like most cars in this game you do definitely have to learn how to drift it or use the handbrake to get around tight corners because Otherwise, the handling isn't all there, unfortunately. Uh, another really cool thing this car can do is burnouts, because not a lot of the cars in this game can do them, but you can do circle work with the Porsche, which is awesome. As for the glasses and that really cool samurai jacket, you can actually upgrade that from blue rarity all the way up to legendary iconic status, but I'll show you guys how to do that at the end once we've got all the clothing items together, because that is well worth doing. Uh, moving on to the arm though, Johnny Silverhand's awesome arm. You can actually equip that in this game. Once you finish that shipping in mission, it doesn't direct you to it, it doesn't suggest it, and you can very easily miss it. All you have to do, it's very, very simple. Once you've finished that mission, go into your inventory, go to your backpack, go all items and scroll down to your white rarity weapons. Mine was practically at the very bottom of them and you'll see a little arm in your inventory and it's just labeled miscellaneous or M-I-S-C and it, it's labeled as nothing pretty much. You can barely tell it's even an arm but if you actually click on it, it will equip Johnny Silverhand's arm, which is really, really cool. It is his left arm and it's more like a hologram, of course, as you guys will know if you got this far in the story. He's in your head, so it's a bit of a hologram situation. He shows up in the room and you talk to each other. So it's kind of the same with the arm. It's more of a hologram imprinted on your arm. So you can still see yours, you can still see his, and it's a bit of a blend of them. And it looks really, really cool. You can't always see your left hand very often in this game because of course your right hand is your shooting arm. But when you're reloading, if you're using cyberware like your Mantis blades, if you're using that cool wire or the arm cannon is a really good one to be able to see it because that is a left hand shooter. 
uh, if you're using bikes, if you just want to go into photo mode and spec it out, depending on what angle you're looking at, um, the actual arm it will change how transparent it is and show how much of it you can see, which is really, really cool. Oh, and on the topic of arms, if you guys have played the previous mission already, again, if you haven't, no spoilers, but you do end up with a tattoo from a particular source. You can actually see that one. Uh, if you completely glazed over it and forgot about it like I did for a little while, you can actually check that out very easily in photo mode if you want. It's on your upper right forearm. It's pretty hard to see if you are wearing a jacket. I think it's kind of like half cut off. But mine, I have Johnny plus V and a love heart with an arrow through it, which is hilarious. Just kind of completes the collection of Johnny Silverhand and V, which is just great. It's pretty hard to see in game because it is on your that kind of awkward spot far up on your right forearm but it's just an extra cool thing you can check out you can also equip and unequip it uh in your cyberware inventory if you want to check that out now moving on to johnny's iconic boots these ones are super simple to pick up all you have to do is a side mission called family heirloom uh, if you haven't picked that one up already you can find it in westbrook charter hill it's actually a rogue mission which is super easy to complete all you have to do is fight some enemies in a car park which the mission uh, directs you to and once you've killed them all the mission then directs you to a locker in the back of the car park which has some stuff you have to collect for the actual mission but also in said locker is johnny's iconic boots and you just pick them up you can equip them mid mission and that's all you have to do to actually collect them you can then also upgrade them like i said the jacket and the glasses can be also i'll explain how to do that at the end once we've collected the pants as well but that's literally so simple all you have to do let's move on to the pants also in a different side mission which is actually pretty simple as well if you guys haven't collected that one already you can find it in haywood in the glen the closest fast travel station for that one is the el coyote kojo bar if i pronounce that right apologies if i butchered it but that one is super close the side mission is called psycho fan uh, pick that one up complete that one just run through it as usual and uh there's not even any combat it's a very simple mission you just have to sneak into an apartment with no one in it go upstairs you'll find a bedroom and on the left hand side of the bed you'll find a suitcase uh the mission doesn't direct you to it you'll just have to kind of explore around uh pretty easy to find though and just in that suitcase you'll find johnny's iconic pants you can take those equip them you don't even have to finish the mission if you don't want to it's incredibly short if you just want to finish it off while you're in there but if you want you can just leave the apartment and bam you have johnny's iconic pants now if you guys want to upgrade any of those clothing items we just collected for johnny silverhand's collection you can do those they are immediately blue rarity at least from my experience they're blue rarity but you can upgrade them regardless all the way up to your legendary iconic status which is really, really good because they'll all have uh, increased armor. They'll have increased mod slots, extra special abilities, all that good stuff. So I would highly recommend doing that. Now, you will have to be a decent level in the technical skill tree to do that. But by the time you're actually that far into Act 2 and be able to do any of these missions, it will be at least a decent level. I could do it uh, by level 26, I think. And I was messing around in the body tree as well. But regardless of you guys wanting to upgrade just these items, I would highly recommend going down that tree regardless because it is such a great ability. Being able to craft your own legendary or even epic rarity items, including weapons, clothing, armor, all that good stuff. Because, uh, for example, some legendary weapons, which to be honest, aren't that amazing, still cost upwards of $100,000, $150,000 for some vendors, which is crazy expensive for how difficult it is to get money in this game. Uh, so I would highly recommend going down the tree anyway, because you can just craft your own legendary weapons. You can upgrade them to make sure they stay on the same level, and you can just have way more legendary or epic rarity, uh, iconic weapons, clothing, all that good stuff, just because you can craft it at a way cheap price of just some components, which is great. Now, as for how to upgrade or craft items, if you guys have never done it before, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to your inventory, go to the crafting section, and then just scroll through your blueprints. Uh, Johnny stuff is originally a blue rarity items. And then all you have to do is go to the purple or epic rarity section, and they'll actually have the blueprints there for you straight away. Now, you won't be able to upgrade them unless you've specced into the right skill trees for both epic and legendary. So once you're level 18 in the technical tree, if you're going for the legendary stuff, You'll have to spec into two abilities only, being Grease Monkey, which is only one point, and that allows you to craft any epic rarity blueprint, which is awesome. And then for the legendary one in the technical crafting tree as well, Edge Runner, which is on the far right hand side, will allow you to craft any legendary item in the game, which you had the blueprint for, which is really, really cool. So first for Johnny's stuff, go craft all the purple or epic rarity items first. They'll show up in your inventory and then you go uh, back to your crafting section. You might have to reload it, by the way. It didn't show up straight away for me. I just had to exit and come back in. And then all the legendary blueprints will be there. 
and you'll be able to craft each one of those. Now, a tip, if you guys want to make sure you get a good roll, make sure you save your game just before you craft, because it is pretty expensive to have a bunch of legendary components or epic rarity or hype, whatever they're called, how expensive they are. They do take a while to collect, so make sure you save them beforehand, and if you want to essentially save file farm your rolls, because you can actually get much higher armor on them, you can get multiple mod slots, Sometimes the glasses or the jacket, I think I've even got it once before, at legendary status didn't even come with a mod slot, which is super, super annoying. So make sure you save beforehand. And if you do end up with a really trashy roll, you can just go back to your save file, load it up again. You'll have all your stuff, all your components, and you won't have your items again. You can craft it again and hopefully you get a better roll the next time. Now, a really good thing, the pants you guys might have noticed, depending on what level you are, mine spawned at level 33, and I was only level 26 at the time of doing the mission, and I wasn't exactly a super high level. I guess I wasn't really rushing it, so I assume most people would be around the same level. Now, a really good way to still be able to equip them is actually upgrade them to legendary status because it actually gets rid of the level restriction for some reason. At epic rarity, it's still locked at level 33 or locked at higher than I was at least. But as soon as I got the pants up to legendary status, I could still wear them even at level 26. So you can get around that level uh, block essentially just by upgrading them, which is really cool. And that is my complete guide on how to find all of Johnny Silverhand's stuff in Cyberpunk 2077 and then upgrade it to the best it can be to do a ton of damage, have a ton of armor, and it look really cool all at the same time. I really hope you guys found the video helpful or enjoyable. If you did, don't forget to smash subscribe down below. It's totally free, helps me out a ton. I do appreciate it a lot. If you guys found anything in Cyberpunk that's like a hidden little Easter egg, cool legendaries, upgrades, or just something cool in Cyberpunk and you think the community is missing out or hasn't heard of it or sleeping on it, let us know in the comment section down below or in my Discord. That's always linked down below if you want to jump in there and let me know. And I'm sure the community would love to hear it as well. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video and a live stream. Till then, adios.